Remember Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs in chapter 1. We um, began last week. We're going to kind of go over a little bit this week of uh, what we covered to get us back in there a little bit. Um, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So we talked about last week, number one, um, the transferring of wisdom, talking about this, the, the, the concept, this idea of transferring this wisdom. So uh, under that, you know, who is qualified to be the authority on wisdom? Well, I suppose if there's any man that, that would be qualified on this earth outside the Lord himself, it would be Solomon, the King Solomon. Let's turn over, keep your place there, but turn over to 1 Kings chapter 3. Um, we looked at this last week. We're going to go through these things real briefly to get us back, um, get our minds back to where we are at there with this. Um, 1 Kings chapter 3 and in verse 12. Uh, said, the Lord is saying, this is the Lord speaking to Solomon. He says, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So um, we find here that if there's a person that's qualified, it's the one that God gave the greatest wisdom of all man ever, right? And he would be the one qualified to uh, to really write a book on, on, uh, on wisdom. Something else, though, we learned about Solomon during this period of his life there is in verse 6. Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son, to sit on his throne as it is this day. And also in verse 7, he says, And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. So we find some things about Solomon. Solomon was a man that, that acknowledged. Uh, he, he acknowledged God's hand in the life of his family through his father and, and so forth and, and coming to him. And it was God that gave him that position. Uh, yet we, we see his, also his humility, right? His, his acknowledgement and awareness of, of his inability to do the job that was before him was the character that he came to the Lord with. Um, there's, a, there's a great value in admitting that I can't do it, right? Um, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that he couldn't do anything. His, his father was David, and obviously he had some experience, watched his dad do some things. You, you think uh, David taught Solomon some things? I, I would imagine he would have, and, and he's seen, seen those things, and uh, David seemed to have a, a heart and a passion for his children, right? When, when, if you know anything about King David, he, he, for he seemed to have passion, even of his children that turned on him, he, his heart broke for him, right? I mean, there was this, so I imagine there was some of this, and yet what Solomon was saying is this is too big for me, right? It's too big for me, God. I, I'm, not, I'm not enough for this. It's, I need you and what he was saying, so he, so he acknowledged that. So then, who is qualified to give, give teaching on wisdom? So, uh, it's, it's one that is humble, thankful to God, and equipped by God for the task. So if, we're, so if we then are going to share wisdom with others, it would be good to have that same character. Amen? Humble, right? Nobody's interested in a what? In an arrogant teacher, right? Thankful. If you have any lick of sense, it's because God gave it to you, right? If you've got... I mean, listen, if, there's, if you've got some, something up here between your ears, right, it's because God gave it to you. Um, you know, we're, 
by, by the grace of God, you know, we, we're born into a place that, that um, we, we, we have great blessings here in America, right? You know, when, when I was uh, talking to some other folks from another nation, I said, you know, where would you, you know, where would you, if you, if, anyway, these, these Buddhists were telling me they want to be born or reborn somewhere. I said, well, if you're, if you're reborn, I said, where would you want to be reborn to? He said, well, probably, you know, maybe England or America or Canada. I said, well, why would you pick those places? <laughs> you know, people where they, where they have food, you know, and, and you know, uh, a society and, and so forth. And uh, listen, the whole world wants to be where we're at, right? They want to they want to be where, where we're at. And they want to take what we have, too. <laughs> that's, that's another deal. But what I'm saying, we've we got to be thankful for this kind of situation. If we've got anything, it's because God gave it to us. And uh, listen, uh, and then and then we also give God's wisdom that he's given to you. If we're going to give wisdom to somebody, let's give what God's given us. And so uh, we find that. And then we talk about the introduction of wisdom. And, and, and Solomon begins then back in Proverbs this introduction in verse three, let's go on. He says to, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity to give subtlety to the simple and, and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So there's several key words. We talked about these uh, last week in this first sentence um, to see the purpose of Solomon to give to his son and, and, and further for God to give to us. And what we're finding here, he said, to know. He said, I want you to know. I want you to, to perceive, to receive, to, to give subtil, uh, subtlety, uh, to, to give discretion. This is all about what Solomon was doing. It was giving, was imparting, or, or giving something to someone else, in particular here, it's his son. But Solomon was introducing his purpose. And his purpose, in, in his purpose, he wants to give something to his son that will help him to navigate life, right? He wants to give him something that's going to help him to navigate this, this, this life from the wisdom that he had, that he had received. Now, now Solomon, um, he didn't always do right, did he? Um, look through the book of Ecclesiastes, um, and we find Solomon search the world to find answers of, of hope and the meaning of life and what would bring pleasure. And he looked for every different way and every different way to find something to, to give him meaning and give him excitement and give him so, something in life. And every time he, he got there, he came to this place, he said, it's, it's, it's vexation of spirit, which means he, he reached for it when it looked like he was right there. That's what it's going to be. He reached for it, and there's nothing there. It's all vanity, he said. It's all vanity. Vexation of spirit. It looks like it, something. It looks like that thing will be the thing that will really fill that hole in my life, really meet some need in my life. And he grabbed for it, and he came up with empty arms. And uh, at the end, he said it's, um, it's to uh, trust God. <laughs> Isn't it? And it's something where he started was where he finished, but he had some trouble in the middle. I, you know, um, I like um, I like free wisdom. You know what I mean? I like wisdom that, that costs me nothing. I don't really like the wisdom I have to make bad mistakes and consequences to learn. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's great to have somebody that it, it is what we find here, somebody that would give you some wisdom from their life, you know, we ought to, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of strange for us. When we're young and people want to tell us stuff, we know everything, right? Or we don't have time to listen to them. Ah, whatever, I'm going to do, yeah, you don't, you, you don't know what you're talking, you know, we don't say those things, but we're thinking that, and, and as you get older, you know, maybe you slow down a bit, and you're like, could you tell me more about that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so they uh, and so we find some of these kind of things. And so here, here Solomon is, is his purpose was to get this, get this to his son so that his son might be able to navigate this life uh, really better than him. And, and that's what we have here in the book of Proverbs. Now, now let's go to number three. Number three, I think that's where we're the new material, right? That's where we're beginning. Good. I got to that pretty quick. All right. It's all new material from here. The condition of Proverbs. I want you to notice the condition. 
Look at verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So now we go into the second sentence. Um, the second sentence that, 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 is, that is given in Proverbs really deals with a, a prerequisite. Okay? There's a prerequisite. The, there, there's an assumption made by Solomon here that once a person hears a wise saying, he'll receive it and live it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I mean, okay. Wouldn't that just be awesome? You, you tell your kid one time how to take out the trash without it dripping along the sidewalk or the kitchen floor, and they never make a mistake again. You just one time, right? Wouldn't that be great? You did, wouldn't it be great you're working, you know, you have some employee you're working with, you just tell them one time, here's how you do this task, and you never have to tell them again. Wouldn't that be great? Three people agree. <coughs> All right. So it would be great. Uh, so we know, we know that they, nor... <clears throat> nor us, here's something once and fully apply it, right? Um, uh, we, we can find that. It's, but, but there is a bit of this concept in, in the book of Proverbs, and it's kind of the way it's written. It's written in that fashion that, that when something's told, now there's this, here it is. It's not, there's not a lot of necessary commentary in, in Proverbs. It's not meant to be that kind of book, right? It's not meant to be a book that deals with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of theology, a lot of uh, doctrine. It's not meant to do. It's meant to give a wise saying, here it is, go do that, and it'll help you, okay? Um, in other places, don't do that or it's going to hurt you, and that's it. And, we kinda, and then go on to the next thing. And Solomon, you can kind of just see uh, maybe uh, somebody, I, I almost kind of get the feeling of, uh, of Proverbs is, is, uh, is a man that knows he's dying, and is trying to get as much out as he can to give his son. I just kind of just get, I don't know if that's necessarily the kind, but I kind of get that. It just seems to be one thing after another thing after another thing. And sometimes you're, you, you, you don't really necessarily always study the book of Proverbs linear like that because you go through and it's like, did we change subjects? <laughs> it's kind of a little bit strange like that. But there's this concept. So, so there's this, this prerequisite here for wisdom to be a value in our lives is that we first hear it. Hear it. Verse 5, it says, a man, a wise man will hear. So one of the challenges for us, especially as we get older, okay, is that we've already received all the wisdom that we really want to have. Yeah, I want you to think about that for a moment. As we get older, We've kind of received all the wisdom that we think, yeah, I, I kind of, we've kind of dealt with all the things that we feel like we want to deal with. You understand? So what I mean, and then there's a point that we, we, would, we would often rather just live in what I know and am sure of than to reconfigure my thinking around something new. Uh, something new doesn't mean something, there's nothing new under the sun, but there's a lot of new things to me. Right? By the way, something that's new to me is old. Right? If, if, it comes, if it's new, if it's new to the Bible, then it, then it ought to not be new to you. <laughs> you understand? Or to me. But sometimes we, we learn something new or additional and say, well, I don't, I don't think there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else to learn. We wouldn't say that, would we? The Apostle Paul said, I, I haven't attained. You know, I'm still pressing toward that. So we wouldn't say that, but sometimes we kind of we, we kind of can be resistant to, to something beyond what we've already understood. So, so receiving wisdom takes this first thing of hearing it. So um, is there a difference between listening and hearing? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, you ever had somebody 
or, or you said to somebody, did you hear what I said? And they're like, yeah. And he said, well, okay, and I'll do this to my kids. It's, you know, others I'm working with, you know, I say, okay, well, repeat it back to me. Well, uh, we're guilty. Aren't we all guilty of that? We kind of, were, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, amen, amen, that's good. Which part of it? Well, the period at the end, you know, I don't, <laughs> you know so we kind of, we, we, we kind of, our human nature is this kind of thing. We've kind of got all we want, and we, we're, you ever felt like, I've got enough to deal with right now, right? I'm kind of dealing with what's going on, and, and listen, God doesn't want us to just get to this plateau in our life. We're climbing up this place, we get here and say, whew, I made it. God said, no, you, you've not made it. You, you've got further, praise the Lord for that. I don't think the Lord says praise the Lord, but for us, praise the Lord, we got further than we were. But now we're at this place and, and God doesn't say, okay, you're done, unless you're done. <laughs> Sometimes that's where the end is for you. And, and if, you're, if you stop breathing, you got there. Right, everybody here breathing? Okay, something else to grow on, right? Uh, by the way, growing... Growing doesn't always mean we do something more or do something. I got you. Got to do more stuff. Sometimes growing in a relationship with the Lord is just uh, under, knowing Him more and understanding Him more and trusting Him more and and uh, uh, loving Him more, appreciating Him more, thanking Him more, praying more, talking to Him more. All these kind of things. And growing isn't uh, it isn't isn't the same thing. There's different areas, but we find this thing. Um, it's an interesting thing that we find here, though. The, the prerequisite here is that in verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So it's interesting. what's interesting to note is that it is a wise man a wise man that'll hear. So the prerequisite to receive wisdom is to be wise. Wait a minute. Is this circular logic? Yeah. <laughs> right? It, it almost kind of, you kind of look at what he, somebody said. He said, listen, the, the, it's the wise that'll hear. It's the wise that'll come to understanding so that they can be wise. <laughs> well, what do you do for dummies like me? You know what I'm saying? You know, how do we, what if we're at this place that we're, um, listen, I know it can be a little bit complicated, but what it's, what it's really speaking about here, though, is this. It's speaking of our, of our willingness and, and our desire to know God and to know his ways. See, see what we're talking about, when the, the, when the, it's the, um, uh, when a wise man will hear what he's saying, is a person that desires to know God's ways will hear. They'll listen. And, and hearing, hearing is more than just listening. It's more than just being in the sound of it. It's to receive it. A wise person desires to know what God wants. I mean, they, they want to know, God, I, I desire to know. I want to understand this, God. I don't want to just hear it. I want, I want to know it. And so... So this is where the prerequisite is for the wise to be wise. And wise doesn't mean necessarily we know everything, right? Um, it's a willingness, but, but when we will hear, we will increase learning. And this is what we find here. We will increase that learning when we'll actually hear, when we have a desire and a willingness to hear what God's saying, what God wants, then we'll, we'll, we'll get to that place. And we're, so it, it means that, it will be imparted to our lives in a way that we can use it. <laughs> when I was in um, when I was in basic training, I, I studied on how to use microfish. Anybody here ever heard of microfish? Some of you. You got to be pretty old to understand microfish. Yeah. So it's it's this big old. It's like uh, little pieces of film. You put it under this big machine and you roll it and had a number and you take off this whole thing and you look. And I was a supply guy, so you'd look on there and try to find part numbers and all this. So I learned all about how to use microfish. So I get to the job now. I'm on my, my first duty station. I say, hey, where's our microfish reader? I'm trying to research this part. 
And they said, a what? I said, the microfish reader. They're like, we don't use that. And I thought, man, I studied a whole course on how to use this stinking microfish. They don't even have it anymore. You know, that's frustrating to learn something that there's no value in. You know, to this, to this day, I've never used that skill of microfish reader. Never, never used it. Never had a need for it. So what, what the wise, the, the one that has a desire to learn, to have the desire to understand God, learns it. That's what he's saying. He's, he's going to learn it. He said there, he says, they, uh, and a man of understanding shall attain. Of, listen, you're going to learn that thing. And, and it means it's in part in a way. And, it, and it's, it's like this. It's like you learn a new shortcut, right? You learn a new shortcut or, or, or like this. It's finding out if I tell my wife I don't like the way she cooks, she won't. Right? So if I tell them, I don't like the way you cook, I said, okay, fine. Done. Ooh. You know, what I, you know what I could learn some wisdom from doing that? You know what I learned? Keep my mouth shut and I can eat. <laughs> That's a shortcut. Right? Uh, and so isn't it good to learn stuff like that? Just how to, uh, uh, you know, and sometimes we do a lot of dumb things. And unwise, let's call them unwise. We do some unwise things and, and, we, and we learn something from it and we say you know what i've learned something i'm not going to do that again because when i did that we're not talking about sin okay we're not talking about sin we're talking about things that are wise and unwise like like telling your wife i don't like the way you cook okay that's not maybe not sin it's but it's certainly not smart right and so we find it's a shortcut you know listen you know what, what happens is you, you know the kind of learning that'll help you and that's what we find here in this, this second part of wisdom there is there. He's, and he continues, he said, a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. That's the second part of verse five there. We'll, we'll, we'll attain unto wise counsel. So we see the second part of wisdom is understanding. So a man that understands, rather one that has the ability to receive these sayings, will look to those that will give them wisdom. So what, what he says there, again, verse 5, at the end of it, he says, and a, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So listen, somebody that has the ability to receive, it says, hey, I like shortcuts in this life. And I don't mean a shortcut like a way. I like something that makes sense, not just how to get through this life, but how to, how to how make right decisions. And so a person that says, you know what, if I listen to somebody that's already gone through this, like Solomon, somebody that's, that's, that's already gone through this and, and done what God wants to do, they've gone through it. You know what I want to do? I want to ask them. I want to attain unto their wise counsel. Hey, tell me about it. Not like they start to tell me in mid-sentence, oh, yeah, I, I, know, I know about that. Right? You ever, you ever talk to someone like that? About every, um, the middle of your sentence cuts off when they start. You know what I mean? You're, you're trying to tell them something, and they jump in the middle and say, oh, yeah, and, and by the time you're done, you've not been able to tell them anything, and you, huh, okay. Uh, that's the opposite of what we're talking about. Somebody of understanding says, I want to attain unto wise counsels. They, 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 listen, one of the greatest indicators of our desire to know God is that we will seek opportunities to know God. One of the greatest indicators that we want to know about God is that we'll be in a place that we're learning about God. We're talking about it. We'll be around people that when we get together, we don't talk about... I, listen, I, nothing wrong with talking. I like talking about sports. I don't really know much about it. I don't really follow it much. When, when we were in Pennsylvania, we, we kept up with the our uh, you know uh, professional baseball team. It wasn't a, in the major leagues, but it was just you know professional baseball. We, we love talking about but I didn't go hang out all the time talking about that. When I, I, you know, I don't know enough about that. So some people, and I've known friends, and they, they know stats, names, numbers, and they'll say stuff, and I'm just like, yeah, I like their uniform. You know, <laughs> you know, that's what my girls just say. The, uh, they, they pick the, if there's a sporting event on, they pick who has the prettiest uniforms to go for. That's how they choose. Anyway, um, so what I'm saying though, so, so an indicator, of our desire to know God is that, is that we want to seek the opportunities to know him. 
So listen, one of the primary places God is designated and designed for that very purpose is what? The church. The church. Right? That's where we decide. We, you know, if God said, hey, listen, that's the place to, to equip the saints, right? For the work of the ministry. Okay, so then, the wise will hear, a man of understanding shall attain, that you might understand what Solomon is saying. Look, look at verse 6 now. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Listen, can, can I say this here? Learning takes work. Learning takes work. You know, this isn't something we just uh, uh, sleep on a textbook and we learn trigonometry. I wish it worked like that because I don't know nothing about trigonometry. I can do some adding. You know what I mean? But there's some things that if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're going to learn something, it takes some work. We don't just, it, it, listen, there are times when you'll need to meditate. You're going to have to consider. You have to think about what was just said, right? Uh, we're going to have to consider the things that's, that's said when we're hearing the word of God. And, and he talks about some of these things, the, uh, the, the understanding of proverb, the interpretation, the word, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. It's, you know, you ever had somebody say something? I don't understand. Explain it again. They explain it two or three times. You still don't know what they're saying. And you walk away thinking, I have no idea. And you're just thinking about it. And then, and then sometime down the road, you're like, oh, like your brain catches up. You ever done that? I do that a lot. Sometimes it's my hearing, though. I think sometimes it's my hearing. I've got this 25% hearing loss in this year. So sometimes things come at a different Right, so it kind of gets, and, and my, my, I, I'm sure it's a medical thing, um, but I'll hear something and I don't hear it, and I'll start to ask about it, and while I'm in the middle of asking, and they start to answer the process, I'm like, okay, yeah, I know, <laughs> you know, because I, mean? I, I hear it kind of in pieces, and my mind has to put the puzzle together. Sometimes this is the way we are. We we kind of listen. We got to hear. It. Sometimes we're gonna have to meditate. I've got to think about it, right? If it was easy, everybody would be a theologian, right? Everybody would know all the Bible, but that's not. It takes, it takes some work, and that's why we, we kind of sit. Sometimes, when we learn something about the Lord that we didn't previously understand, we have to rethink how this truth affects some of what we already know. See, so we'll learn something. We'll learn something. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that that's what that meant in the Bible. I didn't, ha. Huh. So if that's true, I wonder, oh, hmm, if that's true, then this thing I thought over here, okay, you, you understand, see what I'm saying? You, you've done that? Hopefully you've done that. When I, got, when I got saved at 22 years old, I didn't know anything about God, and then I realized I did know things about God, and everything I knew about God was on TV. Touched by an Angel was my Sunday school teacher, right? Y'all ever watch that movie? Show, not movie, but a show. The uh, um, the Ten Commandments, you know, holding up the arms, all this kind of stuff, and Ben Hur and all the. And I thought I didn't know, I didn't know that that was my teacher. I didn't realize, and so I I believed everything I had it was input into my mind from those sources. And so, but if you'd asked me, I'd have told you like I believe it. I didn't know where it came from, but it was there. So when I learned something new. Like out of the Bible, not off TV, right? Not off some, uh, some person to say, yeah, I know about stuff and they told me stuff. But they didn't know about stuff. They didn't know about the book. I would find something. I'd hear it. I thought, oh, okay, so if that's true. And then you know what I'd do? I'd have to meditate on that. And as I'm thinking, sometimes, you ever, you ever seen something? You know, I, I hope you've done this. Is all of a sudden the light comes on. Oh. Well, that makes sense now. Have you done that with the Bible? I'm, I've done all of a sudden. It's like, wow, this is what this what is talking about. Listen, it causes us to rethink some of our thinking. Uh, for example, look at look at Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. We kind of have a little bit of an example here. Uh, I'm just trying to use this maybe as an example. It's um, 
something here that folks kind of deal with a little bit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good, right? Isn't that good? I love that. All things work. Listen, all things work together for good. Anything that happens, it's going to be good, right? Well, well, there's more to the verse, isn't there? Isn't there's a little bit more? But, but listen, if you read a little placard, if you read a, a quote, it's often, I mean, you, secular people, right? All, all, all things work together for good. They love that because it sounds very positive, right? Sounds very positive, feels very good. All things work together for good. <sighs> but it's not really the verse, is it? And we know that all things work together uh, for good to, to them. Which them? Them that love God and to them who are the, the called according to his purpose. And so first, you know, first we might learn that, that this verse isn't for everyone, right? It's only for them that love God. It's the saved. Oh, wait a minute. So my neighbor, I told him, hey, it'll all work out for good. Oh, I maybe shouldn't have told him that. Right? And maybe when somebody says, you know, there's some, some sinner living in sin, you're like, oh, all things work out. Oh, oh. oh, I messed up on that, didn't I? You see what I'm saying? Sometimes we kind of go through these things. And um, second, we realize that, that whatever God has allowed in my life, Here's what we learn. Here's what we learn. Whatever God has allowed in my life, it is for good. Okay? That's what we're seeing here. But that good isn't necessarily just for me. It's, it's for God's good. It's for God's good. All things work out together for good to them who love God. The, the call according to his purpose. His purpose may not be for my good in this situation. Matter of fact, the purpose might be pretty bad for me. For somebody else is good. Um, that's the thing about the stock market. If you ever made money on the stock market, somebody had to lose money. <laughs> right? That's the way it goes. If, if your stock went up, uh, uh, if your stock went up, somebody's went down. I mean, somebody lost money. It's just kind of the way it goes. And so... Um, Listen, sometimes you ever pray, oh, Lord, please don't let it rain. And somebody's over there, Lord, please do let it rain. I mean, you understand how this thing works is so, so that good isn't necessarily for me. It's for God's good, which, which might mean it's for my suffering that God's good can prevail. Verse 27 says this, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Listen, but God's good, rather the will of God, will ultimately fall out to my good. Verse 31 says this, What shall we then say to these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? So here's the thing. If I'm under the understanding that everything that happens to me is for my good, I have a particular worldview that everything is going to work out fine for me. Right? Right? When it doesn't, which inevitably, there's going to be times that everything doesn't work out for me. Isn't that a bummer? I like it when everything works my way. But that's not always the case. So when it doesn't, and we have that worldview that everything's going to work out together for good, for me, I can be disillusioned. I can be distraught, angry, upset, disappointed with God. But it was... It was due to my not understanding this truth. So, so what happens when, when my family member dies, and I believe, God, if I pray, you're going you're gonna to heal them. I believe because I pray you're going to heal them. And they die. How many people, I can't tell you how many people I, I've visited over the years that's just been upset with God because a family member died. People die every day. Right? It's appointed on a man wants to die. After that, the judgment. I mean, this, this, this isn't a surprise. I didn't know they were going to die. Man. And then we can get upset with God. And so there's this. And then, but now when I, when I understand it, some point in the future, that, oh, he didn't mean everything that I ever asked for, I'm ever going to get it. Wouldn't that be great? Like, like, like God is the, the big feller up in the sky that just has a credit card ready to dish out to me. No. 
But, but we can have that thinking. We can have that thinking. It's, it's wrong thinking, but we can have it. But then we learn something new. At some point in the future, I can go through and rethink my false assumptions and relieve some of that bitterness and distrust of God. Man, I remember when that happened, but later on I realized, well, I was, I was misunderstanding God back there, but I understand now. And so you know what I do? I rethink those situations in my life based on the truth that God has now given to me. That's what this understanding is all about. Listen, uh, every time we learn or understand additional wisdom, we go through that process. Every time. Every time we learn a new truth about God, uh, something specific, we go through when we process those things. It can be both difficult, it can be exhausting, but it can also be liberating. You see? Wow. Man, that makes so much more sense. We get, I'm telling you, there's things that I've learned through my, through my life, some later. I mean, you know, different points of life. I mean, there's just waypoints in my life down the road, and this place down here, I learned something, and I thought, wow, I was so messed up and frustrated and discouraged over here, but I realized I had wrong thinking there, and now, huh, man, it wasn't that God had, like, shut me out. It's I didn't understand what was... And so it becomes liberal, but it's also exhausting because you got to now meditate on this and think through it. Listen, can I tell you, learning is work. But last thing, we'll be done. The, the prerequisite for, for the wisdom of Proverbs is that we hear and understand. That's it. We hear and understand. It's about a desire. The desire to know him more. Father, I pray that you would, Lord, help us to have a desire and a willingness to know you, to know about you, to know your direction, what it is that you're doing in our lives and around us. And Lord, so much in your word that we still just really haven't got to yet. Lord, you, you haven't really... Uh, been able to because of our deficiencies you haven't been able to get it to us or you, you tried attempted and yet lord we're, we're waiting and, and uh, lord i pray that as we that we'd be willing to receive those things and then we might consider it in our life lord help us now i pray that you would give us each a, a, a desire a hunger to know you and the greatest evidence of that is we would seek those opportunities to be in that place where we can get to know you. Father, we'll thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.